Every week on FoxNews.com, the special report homepage, viewers vote on what topic we should discuss first during the Friday lightning round. This is it. You can see the poll on our website, halfway down right there on the right-hand side. As of 3 p.m. Eastern Time, more than 40% of the 2,000-plus votes went to Charles Krauthammer's wild card pick. And he just told me <laughs> that he is rarely humbled, but he is humbled now. By the confidence that the viewers have placed in me. <laughs> question is a strategy question. You're a member of the House, a Democratic member of the House. You saw what happened in Massachusetts. What do you do purely as a political calculation on health care? Walk away, approve the bill that the Senate has passed as a way to ram it through, or start over and negotiate with the Republicans for a compromise? The answer I would give, and the correct answer is, walk away. Because if you engage in negotiations with the Republicans, it will take months. And one of the messages out of Massachusetts is that the electorate looks at this as a distraction. It's not their top issue and spending another half year on this, no matter how it turns out in the end, is going to only hurt Democrats. Nina. Well, you're wrong on your own question, Charles. I was afraid I might. <laughs> um, I think if you're a Democratic House member, you look beyond your parochial interests and you look to the interests of the White House because you're linked to them and the party, and it's suicide not to pass something. You've got, if this, if the White House doesn't compromise and doesn't get something through that they can call health reform, this is a president, keep in mind, just a couple months ago, we we're saying his presidency's over if they don't pass health, health reform. And if you, you see the pot shots that are being taken over Bernanke, um, over, it's gonna. It's just gonna keep rising. If he's he's gonna be perceived as so weak that he can get nothing done, and he's gonna have trouble with his own base moving into the um, midterm elections, you're gonna have a very unenergized, unhappy base. Charles, you were wrong, but not because you said you'd walk away, but because you should have said you were gonna sprint away. <laughs> uh, it, the, the, it, the public now believes that uh, that this is dead. To do what you're suggesting, even if it would potentially link them back up with the White House, would be to give it life again, try to bring it back from the dead, which I think would be worse than having had it passed in the first place. Quickly, what about the Republicans out there like Newt Gingrich who are saying Republicans should launch an effort to pass something and uh, kind of grab the mantle and s don't do it? Bad idea. Strategy? I do think that Republicans are going to be, now that they've been the recipient of all this, a lot of goodwill and so forth, the last couple elections, including Scott Brown, they do need to start coming forth with ideas. So I, I do think that it would benefit them to do that. Okay, quickly, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, uh, he was uh, essentially named by the White House as being the man who decided that uh, the Christmas Day bomber would be tried as a criminal, randized and tries to, tried as a criminal. Steve. Uh, well, that's the worst guess kept secret in Washington over the past three days. Everybody assumed it was Holder who did this. The, the real scandal, I think, here is that the senior intelligence officials were not even notified that this was taking place and that they didn't consult with the intelligence community who had a mountain of evidence on Abdul Muttalib went before they went and asked questions. So they asked questions without actually knowing anything when the U.S. government did, in fact, know quite, quite a bit. Yeah. And Steve, I think, has raised the question of, you know, is, is this White House going to throw him under the bus if, um, it, as they move forward, they see this as a political liability? Holder, on, you mean. Uh, Holder I'm sorry. Um, I think on that question, I think the White House, um, while it would probably behoove them to govern more like Bush on matters of terrorism, I don't think they're there yet, and I think that they'll continue to stand behind Holder. There's an even larger scandal here, which is that a year ago, on his inauguration, Obama abolished the old interrogation techniques and methods in an executive order, and then in August, ostensibly established a group of interrogators. Well, at Christmas, the group didn't exist. It doesn't exist as of uh, today. There was no way, even if you wanted, to have a high-level uh, detainee um, uh, questioned in a way that would be effective after a year in office. Quickly, conservatives, pretty good week? You know, this is an amazing week. Uh, uh, Massachusetts uh, goes Republican, health care dies, uh, and, uh, and the, the, the Supreme Court unshackles the First Amendment. It's the best week I've had since spring the break in medical school, and I don't even remember it. Uh, <laughs> and, the, the, and there was another item we, which you mentioned, Air America, the liberal uh, talk show, uh, network went out of business, which is a redundancy because nobody was listening anyway. I want to get this uh, alert in, so thank you all. 
This is a Fox News alert. An amazing story. An Israeli rescue team has just pulled a 22-year-old man from the rubble 10 days after the earthquake in Haiti. The man was pulled from a crevice in the wreckage of what had been a three-story home. That man is said to be in stable condition tonight in an Israeli field hospital. Again, the Israelis pulling out a man alive. We expect to have video of this rescue shortly, so keep it on the Fox report uh, for the latest. That's good news. That's it for the panel, but stay tuned for what appeared to be a quick turnaround on one key decision.